Winter Recovery Wash. I'm Ivan. I'm Nick. And this is DIY Detail. It's big, it's white, and it's dirty. It is an explorer. And we're going to explore a way of making your vehicle clean after the winter. You really want to decontaminate the pores of the clear coat. We're going to give you a few easy steps. We're going to wash it. We're going to decontaminate it. We're going to protect it very easily with quick feeds, our water activated ceramic. Ivan, let's walk and talk. Exactly. Boom. First of all, we need our pressure washer. Meantime, While I'm getting that, Nick is going to foam the wheels with All Clean. Indeed I am. All Clean diluted at 15 to 1, 15 parts water, one part All Clean in our IK foamer here. I may just hit the lower panels because they are full of grime and dirt as well. Exactly. Closer to the road, more abuse. Now with the pressure washer, I'm not going to start spraying the vehicle. No. We're going to foam it first. Why do we foam first, Ivan? Well, Incredible Suds is actually a really good cleaner to begin with. Secondly, it's going to emulsify the dirt, lift it off the surface, and just leave us maybe with a bit of traffic film. Once we're done that, then we rinse it. That way, we're not driving the dirt into the paint with our pressure washer. Designed incredible suds to be this way. It always amazes me every time I foam down a vehicle how thick and clingy the soap is with just one ounce in my foam can. And don't underestimate the power of smell either. The grape smell is amazing, people love it. iron remover there on the wheels to assist with uh, all that brake dust. Exactly. Now, foam cannon's gonna come back in a minute. But once we're done rinsing, we'll actually foam it again to give us more lubrication for the contact wash and the clay towel. Always make sure when you put your tip into your pressure washer to not aim it at the vehicle until you check it. There we go. This green flag tip brush is so amazing. It's safe not only on your wheels, great on tires, and you'd use it separately, but it's also safe on paint. And if you don't believe me, Ivan, you hear the haters out there, they say, again, you're not gonna put this in your wheel bucket, but they say this green brush cannot be used on paint. Surely it'll scratch. What say you? Well, I just happen to have a fresh clean one here, and no, it's not going to scratch. Now on the front of this, it's springtime. Not only is it a winter wash, but we have some insects here. So let's get them off the grill. Well, they might have been here since last summer, who knows. Oh no, you're scratching the paint, Ivan. Not in any way, shape, or form. The wheel and body brush really is for the wheels and the body, it's safe. It's soft, but yet agile. All right, Ivan, cleaning wheelbarrows, over or underrated? If you're doing it for yourself, it's up to you. If you're doing detailing for money, customers may not even know they have wheelbarrows there to see. So yes, if you're a, a detailer, it may be overrated unless you're charging for that because it takes additional time. The wheel and body brush is that. 
It is epic. I love it. And yeah. uh, Ivan has proven many times over many detailing channels that that does not scratch. Exactly. Let's rinse it off and then back to the foam can. Since Nick's already on this side, foam cannon part two. Boom. Take the tip. Thank you, sir. And off we go again. There we go. So we, got foamed. A, we got a suds up the watch bucket, Ivan. Yes, we do. Let's do it with a foam cannon this time. Yeah, why not? Always a pleasing visual. Indeed it is. All right, Ivan, I'm gonna start with the roof. Very good. Actually, this is not a bad spot. Just to demo how safe this is, to use this brush, because the roof can be a tough spot. So even exactly. with the ladder, which is the safest way, so we don't want to see you out there standing on wheels, you know who you are. But I can get this far with my mitt, I can get this far with the brush. So it's kind of nice if you deal with trucks or anything like that, where you just really have issues with the roof. I'm 5'8", maybe 5'9 on a good day. Um, not a bad idea for the roof. What do you think about my uh, impromptu decision to use this brush, Evan? Exactly, great one. And I'll use the mitt to do the sides, perfect. All you haters out there, leave your comments. Are we scratching up the paint? Are we a bunch of hacks? Or are we geniuses? We're not geniuses, but we're not hacks. How about that? It's well known in the industry that a good quality flag tip nylon brush is not going to scratch your paint. Would you get some soap on your shirt? There's a good chance. Remember, I'm ADHD, so if I see anything, I just immediately take it and say it. Squirrel. I don't want to wash the whole car with this, Ivan. The bristles getting all the nooks and crannies. It's good on windows too, huh? Yeah, many people do that. I don't know why I don't. It's how we clean our bus, but we use a 10 inch wide brush, a little faster. Now, not only are we using a brush, but we're not using the two bucket method, no. The two foam method actually is safer than the two bucket method. Why? Well, first of all, we foam the vehicle twice. Between the two, we've rinsed it off. So any grit is gone, long gone from the paint. What's left is traffic film. That's all we're dealing with. So we're not moving grit around. And the second bucket, sure, sounds nice, and it works to a point. But eventually, it gets full of that grit as well. And a lot of times, the grit floats. So by not introducing any of that grit into our wash media, into our wash bucket, we have a safer wash. Save that in your wisdom bank, folks. That was a, that was a jewel right there. Dropping some wisdom, Ivan. Just this a couple of years do. of experience. I thought you were gonna say, this is what I do. No, but experience can't be replicated. And what I mean by that is, 40 years is 40 years, right? Time just takes time. Yeah, you wash enough cars, the stuff starts to come naturally. I learn something every day, Ivan. Yeah, so do Even I. Even this brush, I just kind of like tried it and I'm like, why don't I do this every car? And I might just start. And not only have I been you know, in the detailing world for 40 years, but I've also done a lot of research and development with and for different companies. So, when you're analyzing paint with a microscope, you see exactly what different wash tools and methods do. 
What we see is one thing, but what we can see with a microscope is completely different. Where have you washed that? And I'm going to start the decontamination process with our perforated, synthetic decontamination towel. The whole side is done. Okay. So, decontamination, right? You think of a clay bar. This is actually not clay. It's our perforated synthetic decontamination towel. It has all these little perforations, so if you're worried, like, where do the bits of contamination go? Well, they are safely carried into this towel. You're going to use one side at a time, so I'm going to take my iron remover, one spray into my towel, a couple sprays on the paint, and I'm going to put my towel exactly where I sprayed and just start to work it around. And it's working on a bed of incredible suds, which has a ton of slickness anyway, so you're getting the added slickness of incredible suds plus iron remover as our lube. I'm just going over the surface, no pressure at all, lightly shaving away some of these contaminants. Try to get the pores of this clear coat as receptive as possible for our protection process, which will come next, Ivan. Exactly. You know, a lot of people, as soon as they hear the word clay, they immediately think polishing. And yes, we do call it a fine clay towel, but it actually is a synthetic decontamination towel. So what the heck does that mean, they're gonna say? Well, unlike clay, there's actually no abrasives in it. It's not using abrasives to remove the clay, it's using a synthetic material to basically, for lack of a better term, pluck the dirt or the contaminations off the surface. You said it's not using abrasive to remove the clay, you meant that not a Not abrasive to remove the contamination, sorry. Good catch there, Nick. This is a good explorer. I mean, sometimes you think, oh, whatever, a Ford Explorer, kind of boring. Not boring for me, but by the standard of detailing, you know, you see so many cool cars. But driving this into the garage, it's got a cool display screen. I mean, it's it's the ST model, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So it's a little fancy, got some good stuff. Cars nowadays are so luxurious on the inside. Yeah. Luxurious, all the beautiful tech and everything else. And I'm sure everyone's paying for it too, but that's what the market wants, huh? And look what I found in the bucket. Another perforated synthetic decontamination towel. If you don't have two, you're not doing it right. When you've got two people. One spray on the panel, one spray on the towel, and off we go. You always want to decontaminate your windows as well. It makes them easier to clean. And when we add the protection to it, it's going to make it a lot easier to see out of the windows when it's raining too. It's going to help the quick beads do its thing. This is a great method when you're not outdoors. So if you're outdoors, you're not going to foam down the whole car and then leave it suds everywhere to dry in the sun. That's not what we recommend. You can do this exact same process, just work one panel at a time. You might say, I'm going to foam one panel at a time. It's like, yeah. In direct sunlight, you want to maintain as much control as you can because sun is so powerful, you really don't stand a chance. I don't care if it's water, which is a solvent, by the way. Anything on the paint can dry on you and uh, make your life difficult. So, can it be done in direct sunlight? Absolutely. Um, and if you're gonna do broad swaths of the car, you're gonna wanna have some soft water, a water softener. Is there a water softener of choice out there you recommend, Ivan? No, sir. Find one that works that you can get parts and service for locally. That's the most important bit. So we're done washing the vehicle. Yep, we've got our incredible suds bucket over there. At this point, and really it's just choose your own adventure. If you don't mind the smelly incredible suds wash mitt where you're like, I just want to smell like grapes and it's gonna smell like iron remover, you can dunk back in if you're halfway through the car if that's what you want to do. But because we've finished washing, we're totally good to go ahead and dunk the clay towel or the perforated synthetic decontamination towel back into our wash bucket. It's not gonna hurt anything. Just gonna make the beautiful, incredible suds grape smell change slightly, but this way I can kind of flush the clay side of any possible contaminants. I have more lubrication, more product there from the incredible suds on my towel, and I'm ready to hit four more fresh panels. And you know, the, the nice thing about these towels is also they carry a lot of lubrication. Every time I wash a car, 
I like to use the PSD towel for my windshield, right? Bug guts, whatever. You don't necessarily need the iron remover step, but whether you're using rinseless wash or incredible suds, it is a great way to shave off the bug guts that are coming this summer season. Yes. Coming to a highway near you. Bum, bum, bum. That's why protective paint, quick feed ceramic gloss, our ceramic coating, so amazing, man, especially for bug guts. Like, keep that front end of your car protected. And the Speaking bug guts will just pressure wash right off. Speaking of the front end, have you done the front bumper? I have, sir. Very good. Just have the roof to do. Yep. And then that. we're good to rinse again. While Nick is decontaminating the roof, I can start rinsing down the windows, the hood, the wheels, etc. And when he's done with the roof, we'll rinse that and rinse it off the side of the vehicle. Piece of contamination. Don't grind in there. Just steady back and forth. No extra passes, no effort. And the towel and the iron remover are going to do the job for you. Exactly. All done with the roof, sir? Yep. I'll grab that letter to oh. better rinse it off. Don't underestimate the power of a ladder, guys. You think it's all good, jumping on tires, going on door sills, but like, the ladder makes life easier. It allows you to see what you're doing, to reach. You're not gonna fall off of it if it's a good one. And it's a lot safer than climbing on a bucket, climbing on a stool, a chair, or on the wheels. When you're dealing with the iron remover, you want to make sure you're rinsing it out of cracks and crevices. You want to get it out of everything. It's not going to damage anything if it stays there, but you might see a little red stain coming down a little later if you left some of it there. So be sure to rinse your door handles, moldings, mirrors, making sure that you have all the iron mover officers. Now, Nick, we have to protect this beautiful white paint. I noticed you're really thorough with the rinse off. When you've got the iron remover on the paint, you do want that rinse to be incredibly thorough. So don't skimp on that, because you don't want to be spraying quick beads with the iron remover, and it just get the stuff off first, so all you've got is wet paint before quick beads. Exactly. And speaking of quick beads, here it is. Quick beads, you always want to shake it up. So tempting, I just want to grab it every time I see it. Well, there you go. All right, smells amazing. Less is more. And you want to, you want to make sure your fan is nice and wide. How's that? The finer and the wider it is, the better dispersion you're going to have. There you go. Oh, I feel like I'm on target there. Yeah. Ooh. That's like five sprays. Yeah, maybe a little too much. Go down the side, okay. I'll rinse the whole side. So do you have like an ideal number of sprays? Or you kind of like this guy? So yeah. just a nice, quick, glancing spray. Like that spray that you're getting it everywhere. Yeah, how about that? Well, can't forget the windows, Ivan. No. There you go. Well, Ivan wants me to do the whole panel before he rinses. I got you. And then I'm going to start in this corner. I'm going to rinse on a 45 degree angle. Lifting the quick beads. Yeah, and that's how you know. On the white paint, a little hard to see, but it's there, trust. Me. 
Can't forget the wheels. I'll come back to that in a second. Great. Now, if you have never dried a car that's been treated with quick heats, you're missing something in life. That's not only true, the other thing that's true is people are going to wonder, when do I do the roof, right? Like, do I do that first? It really, no, personal choice. I like to do it sort of first, but we did this side. I'm gonna rinse from this side to that side, then we'll quick beads on the other side. Same thing with the hood. I'm gonna rinse from this side to that side, and then do the other side. So by the time you've rinsed that, I'm gonna start drying on this side. How's that sound? Exactly, perfect. And a couple glancing sprays on the front bumper, making sure to get that grill the more you protect the grill, the easier it will be to clean the next time. So we'll get our ladder one more time. And Nick will need it to dry the roof as well. So we have quick beads dispersed on the roof. And now I'm going to spread it using the pressure. Even though I just sprayed quick beads on this side of the roof, since it's a horizontal surface, I've been able to spread it across the roof using the pressure wash. So, very easy way of doing it, and I know that this side, the roof, is all protected. You get the windshield, and then the hood. Like the wheels in this honeycomb grill, I want to make sure I'm rinsing from different angles just to get all of that off. The beating is insane as I pull the XL drying blanket over the roof here and it just dries effortlessly. Exactly. Incredible. Love it. The best part about quick beads is the drying. Slick, tight water beads. You know your paint's protected, it feels very safe as you do it. coming off effortlessly. And with that, we're done rinsing. Drying is just, honestly, I know I'm saying this a bunch, it's just a joy after quick beads. And I, I can't say that I always enjoy drying the car. Um, I don't know, it's just so smooth. So here's what I've got with the drying blanket. I've got one anchor hand, and then I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid to go down, right? But I've got this anchor hand just to make sure that the towel is not gonna fall on the ground. Otherwise, you could be kind of like this and it's drooping. Anchor it so it's not going to fall any lower than you've controlled. I've set it right here. And now I can go ahead and dry, get as low as I want, knowing I've got the, the anchor and the control up here at my, my right hand. I can tell there's going to be people online saying, you're making car washing sound way too complicated. But it's kind of fun. You get this stuff down, and you just feel like you know what you're doing, and you can get great results in less time. Yeah, we're actually trying to simplify the process. Simplifying it with detailed explanations. Exactly. And you know, not everyone watching has experience washing a car. What's the name of our brand, Evan? DIY Detail. Do it yourself. Aimed at somebody who's just learning how to do this, although we'll go all the way down the rabbit hole with you guys. Yeah, and a lot of professionals are definitely using DIY Detail. I mean, the whole idea with the product line is 
What if we're the first brand that you ever use? But unlike some other brands out there that maybe you've tried, this meets all your expectations, right? This is all you need, then you can stay with us. Go along the journey, we'll keep teaching you. There's just so much marketing hype out there, and I've been disappointed along my own journey, trying products, believing the hype, and it's like, we just wanna meet you at the beginning, or wherever you are on the journey, because the products are good enough for everybody, and hopefully we can all just learn together. Exactly. Finish drying the roof. Uh huh. And you know I got that drip catcher going. I never miss an opportunity for the drip catcher. It's a magnetic towel. It's the green one you see there on the driver's side mirror. And for the next two hours, when that uh, mirror drips, I got a solution. Exactly. If you're an automotive engineer. Please let us know why you design mirrors this way. <laughs> they seem to hold water forever. You can blow them out with compressed air. You can use a master blaster. You can use a leaf blower. You go for a drive and a drip falls down your door. We sell them in two packs, so there are more options around the vehicle where you're gonna want a drip catcher, but you're gonna notice it the most on the driver's side, so that's where I would like to put it. So when I see it, every time I get in the car, or now I won't see it. There you go. You know, these drying blankets, they're phenomenal drying towels. They dry streak-free and they can hold up to a gallon of water. The paint is so smooth, Ivan. Yes, it is. The joys of paint that's been decontaminated and protected. You can't miss out on that. Now, one thing we want to encourage you, whether it's your own vehicle or your detailing, the exterior wash isn't done. You never want to forget about door jams. I feel like door jams just tie in the detail. You really want to use your drying towel. I know we got some quick feeds on here, um, but sometimes I'll throw some ceramic gloss on my drying towel. Quick feeds is fine too. Um, and you're just going to take the already wet door jam and go ahead and wipe it down. I just think a clean door jam pulls the whole thing together. What do you think, Ivan? It sure does. So if you have two people, that's what, what you can do is he's finishing up, grabbing drips, drying out some certain spots, I'll hit the door jams and that way we're both able to get this result done pretty quickly. But you don't want to ignore door jams because your customer won't ignore it. And if it's your own vehicle, well, you don't want to open your freshly washed door Everything is beautiful on the outside. It's super clean. And then it fades with the door. Because even if you don't think about it, your mind's going to see it. Exactly. So the subconscious will know not all is right. To wrap this up, they want to see more videos like this. Where can they go? Uh, right behind me, actually. Cool.